In this video we show how you can use a multi-select token uh, control that allows the user to enter any value uh, in addition to selecting from the list of available choices and then to have the value that they type in entered into a database. So you can see here we have a multi-select token control that gets its values from the products um, table in Northwind and you can see here that we display the product name but we store the product um, ID and we've defined a not in value list uh, method here that's going to make an Ajax callback to the server call an XBASIC function called add new product to actually add the new um, uh, value if it's not in the list into a uh, SQL into the SQL table. So let's go ahead here and first run it and then see how it behaves. So you can see if we type we can either make selections from the pick list or we can type in CH and then uh, press enter or we can basically type in say product uh, 100 and then press enter and you can see that when I type in the product my insertion point is uh, displayed so I can continue typing in new products. So I'll go here and type in um, for example so let's go now and type in product 200 and then press enter and product 300 and then press enter and product 400 press enter and if I go look at my pick list I can see that my pick list now contains all of the newly entered products so behind the scenes let's take a look now at what's actually happening so the first thing to notice is that of course as we showed earlier uh, if you type in a value that's not in the list we are going to basically call this function which is going to make an Ajax callback to a, an XBASIC function called add new product and it's going to pass in um, um, some data here called parameters which has the value that the user typed in so if we go to the XBASIC function we can see that the function over here basically uh, gets the new product uh, that was typed in, gets a uh, pointer, or get, uh, op gets a, a, a connection string to the SQL database, calls the SQL function uh, SQL insert to add the new re record to the SQL table, and then sends a JavaScript response back to the client that either says uh, could not insert the product or if it could insert the product it basically calls a local JavaScript function that we have uh, and passes in as parameters the name of the product that the user uh, typed in and also the value which is basically the last inserted ID uh, into the SQL table and this last inserted ID is returned by this um, SQL insert. So now let's go take a look at the JavaScript function called repopulate products. So if we go to our JavaScript functions here, we see repopulate product over here. We don't. Let's actually let's debug through it. So that's that's a good idea. So let's go here and um, go to working preview. Open up the Chrome debugger go there and first of all let's choose an existing product and then type in the name of a new product so I'll type in prod 300 so this is going to when I press enter now that's going to basically fire the uh, not in uh, list rule the Ajax callback will add the new product and then the Ajax callback will uh, invoke the local function that we've defined so now let's go to that function and basically if we go now and run this we can see that the first thing that we're doing is we're getting the existing value in the control and then creating a new array 
uh, from from that. So basically, by calling uh, mtarray.concat, we absolutely ensure that um, that current value is an array. So let's go take a look now at what's currently in current value. So what's currently in the current value is the ID of the first item that we picked from the pick list and then the name of the second item that we actually typed in. So we'll go here, we'll get the data that's currently in the um, multi-select value which are the 79 or the 80, I guess the 83 choices um, from the database and we can see here that the last item uh, in the database is this product 400 that we just uh, typed in and it has a value of 83 so our goal is to basically turn this uh, current value into an array that has one and then 83 in it so we're going to basically over there go here and uh, push the new product onto the array so now there are going to be 84 items on the array then we're going to basically transform a uh, current value so that it becomes 1 and then 84, I believe, as opposed to 1 and then uh, product 300. So let's just basically just skip ahead all the way to there and now take a look again at uh, current value. So you can see now we've transformed current value. Now we're going to basically reset the value in the multi-select control to uh, what it should be, which is 1 and 84. And then we're going to go ahead and set focus to the control. So let's go ahead and run it there, close the debugger down. And this focus is not shown because we took focus away with the debugger. But now let's go here and type in, say, uh, prod. 400 and then press enter and we can see now that focus is over there so what we've shown is basically how we can use the multi-select token to either select tokens from the pick list or type in the token names ourselves and then have those uh, new tokens added to the back-end SQL database thanks very much for watching